Okay, Simon Fishburne here again for Drum Talk TV, and we have Zach Alford here, and he's graciously given his time on such an amazing night. I keep saying that. It is an amazing night. How did you get involved in Bonzo Bash? Uh, well, actually, I got an email from Stephen Wolf, who's a really good friend of mine, um, and he just asked if I'd be into doing it. Well, I was in Japan, and he said, are, are you going to be around? Um, on uh, at the end of May and I was like yeah I can do that because I just got back a week ago so I'm still kind of jet lagged but um yeah I just said sounds like fun I mean Bonzo right so B-52's um, David Bowie Bruce Springsteen you play with some big players um, does Bonzo have how does Bonzo come out when you're playing with some of these guys, do you think about it, or is it something that was in your past, or how much of an influence was he on, on you? Is there a lot of questions in that? There probably was, wasn't there? Yeah, but Pick it's, one. Um, it's, it's, Bonzo comes out all the time. It's always appropriate. He's one of those drummers that was so ahead of his time that he's still relevant, you know, today. Like, what is it, 30 years after? And, uh, you know, that sound was... At, at the time, he was recording those Zep records. A lot of records were being done with a very tight, close mic sound. And he just, you know, kind of prefigured that whole big, big bamboo sound that just took over in the 80s and was sampled in the 90s. And even now is coming back. And, you know, it's, that sounds always appropriate. And I've, and I've thought about it on every gig I've done. I've thought about it playing with Bruce. I've thought about it playing with the Bees. There are always songs that call for that. And that's what I tap into. Can you remember the first time you heard Bonzo? Like, well, mm, well, I had two older siblings, a brother who was five years older and a sister who was ten years older, so... That helps. I was kind of born into hearing all their records, right. so I really can't remember the first time. But my first probable, probably tangible memory of hearing, not hearing, but just listening to Zeppelin with my older brother and his friends was... Um, Immigrant song. Right. And actually, I had a drum set in my room at the time, and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn that beat. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's the beat, right? Yeah. So, how, how did you approach this gig? Like, what was going on in your mind? How did you mentally approach this? Was it different to other gigs? Um, well, it's different in that you only get one song. So you're coming up there, uh, <clears throat> you know, and you're also paying tribute. So it's a little bit, you know, you got to kind of draw the line between how much am I going to do this my own way and how much am I going to pay tribute to John Bonham. Right. And, um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer because this is the kind of thing that so many drummers wish they could do. You know, you get to legitimately play a Zep tune behind John Bonham's actual kit. You know, it's uh, it's it's a little bit like uh, it's almost too good. You know, I know I'm pinching myself that I'm here speaking with you guys, let alone you getting up on stage and having <laughs> such an honoured experience to actually honour honour him. And you've never you, you've not done this show before. No, right? this is my first time. Yeah, will you be back um, if, they, if they invite if you? If they back. ask me back, definitely. Awesome, yeah. cool. So what can we look forward uh, to hearing and seeing you doing in the next, say, six, eight months, 12 months, a year? What's, what's on your radar? Um, actually, in November, I'm going to be doing a European and uh, slash New York slash Japanese tour with um, Hote Tomoyasu, who I've been working with and just actually got back from Japan working with. And um, this is going to be a new tour for him. Uh, Mainly instrumental music, and he's uh, he's out to um, to conquer the West. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Because normally he sings in Japanese, but this time he's just going to do. You know, he wrote the Kill Bill theme that's kind of known throughout the world, and um, we're going to do more stuff like that. And it's uh, you don't have to understand Japanese to enjoy it. So that's the plan. Awesome. Yeah. Good. And are you doing any master classes while you're on tour? Do you? Do you get the opportunity to do that? Do you enjoy doing that sort of stuff, um, educational stuff? I have done, and I also give some private lessons sometimes, but that's, you know, if fans uh, have the wherewithal to contact me while I'm around. Okay, um, cool. So, 
in saying that, uh, do you have a website that people can follow you at? Uh, um, I do, but Facebook's probably the easiest way. Okay, and we'll grab all your details and we'll have that. Oh, there it is right now. It's coming up on the bottom of the yeah. screen. You see that right there? So you can follow Zach. And um, hey, look, thank you so much again for being thank a part so of this. Much. And um, if there was some, like, words of wisdom that you've got from your experience in being a drummer for how many ever years you've been playing, what, what's one little nugget that you could throw our, our listeners, our viewers? Um... For drummers, I would say record yourself, listen to yourself, and uh, learn to relax. Awesome, dude. We'll have a great gig. I'm sure you will. And um, hopefully we'll get to do a longer interview with you in the future yeah, when you're not so busy. Look forward to it. Dude, thank you so much.